using the SHT21 temperature and humidity digital sensor on I squared C with Node MCU and communicating over UART through a level shifter to an Arduino Uno running a TFT LCD touchscreen showing humidity on a gauge from 0 to 100 percent, temperature on a thermometer graphic, digital readouts, and the ability to use touchscreens to shift between Celsius and Fahrenheit. I'm using this temperature humidity meter just as a rough reference, but I don't even know how well calibrated this is. I've had it for years. I'm using ESP8266 on a Node MCU module. The SHT21 sensor is over here, getting power from 3.3 volts and using I squared C with the ESP8266. I'm using the UNO to work with the touchscreen, and since the touchscreen dominates the UNO and only leaves a couple of pins free, two of the free pins are the UART. So I decided to get the sensor working on an ESP8266, and then just communicate the temperature and humidity data over the UART into the UNO. Right now, in Celsius, we have 22.68 degrees on the sensor, and 22.7 degrees on my reference thermometer. The humidity is always a few percent off. I have 19% on the sensor and 22% over on this monitor. But I don't know which one is more accurate. And ultimately, it wouldn't really matter too much for anything I'd be doing. All I would want to know is, are things really dry, moderate, really humid, whichever one's correct? A couple of percent is okay. But the temperature looks good and that's more important for me to have accurate. The SHT21 digital humidity and temperature sensor has an I squared C interface and it's got low power consumption so it looks like it would be good for an ESP8266 battery powered sort of application. For the humidity, the resolution can be 12-bit or 8-bit, so we can get 0.7 or 0.04 increments in the humidity. The default resolution is 14-bit temperature and 12-bit humidity. So I think either of these increments would do fine in both humidity and temperature. The accuracy for the humidity on average plus or minus 2%, accuracy on the temperature around plus or minus 0.3 degrees Celsius. But there's a couple of graphs that explain how the tolerance changes at different ranges of temperature and humidity. It says here the operating range is 0 to 100 percent humidity and minus 40 to plus 125 degrees Celsius, but we need to look at these graphs to see what's really going on. This can run from 2.1 to 3.6 volts, so it's basically a 3.3 volt system I'll be using it in, and the supply current in sleep mode, the maximum is only 0.4 microamps, so that's good for deep sleep. And when you're taking a measurement, it's using 330 microamps. So sounds good for battery power. So here it says normal operating range is 0 to 80% humidity. And if you go beyond that, you may be getting an offset, but it is reversible. So it would need time to settle back down. And here's the graph of the operating range. Normal range says if you want to measure 90% relative humidity, you should only really do so if your temperature is between minus 20 and plus 60. If you want to measure temperatures close to 100 degrees Celsius, you should be doing so in low humidity. You can do 100% humidity. You can do 120 degrees Celsius. Prolonged exposure to extreme conditions may accelerate aging. To use the SHT21 with Arduino, I'm using this library from Mark B. The usage is very simple. You just include the library. You do the usual begin to initialize the sensor, and then you just read in using get humidity or get temperature, and that's it. For my humidity meter, I'm using an analog meter graphic for the touchscreen display from Bodmer over here in this TFT meters sketch. So it's a bunch of line drawing, curve drawing, and text labeling and coloring in using typical graphics libraries. So I modified this to suit my sketch because I'm using a different TFT display driver. So I took these routines out to draw the meter on the screen using typical rectangles, etc. How to plot the needle on the screen by drawing lines, etc. There's another project I referenced that takes this analog meter and it makes it scalable. And that's what I needed to do because I wanted other things on the screen. I didn't want a full screen analog meter. So this comes from the solar universe. I'll link everything below. And I took 
all of these bits and pieces and came up with my own sketch and it runs on this schematic. So here's what my screen actually looks like. Here's the resized analog meter down to a size I can use. It does 0 to 100 percent relative humidity and then I have this thermometer section and touchscreen buttons to go between degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. This is from a previous project I'll link to below and up in this text box I show the temperature and the humidity. This project is using both an ESP8266 on Node MCU as well as an Arduino Uno. The Uno is used to control the touchscreen so it plugs into most of these headers on top and I'm also using a UART to get the temperature data being sent from the UART on the ESP8266. So I have wires soldered onto the bottom for the UART transmit and receive and a common ground and since we're going between a 3.3 volt UART and a 5 volt UART, I'm doing a level shift. So transmit from node MCU goes into receive of UNO and vice versa through this 3.3 to 5 volt level shifter. 5 volts I'm getting from node MCU, 3.3 volts from node MCU. The sensor module runs on 3.3. It has I squared C and onboard pull-ups. I'm taking clock and data from node MCU, reading in the temperature and humidity, sending that out into a specially formatted text over the UART and reading it in on UNO. As the UNO detects there's new temperature or humidity data, it will update the display. Here's the sketch that runs on the ESP8266. Since I'm sending this data out on the UART, I'm opening the serial port at 9600 and I print out the humidity and the temperature on the serial port. And the way I'm structuring this, I use print so I don't generate a new line and I send out the numerical data and then without anything else, any spaces or anything, because it doesn't really matter, I'm just going to parse this on the other side. If I'm sending humidity, I write the text humidity and then I send a new line so I can detect the end of a line and then I know I've gotten something. If I read in the word temperature, then I know the number that I sent out was a temperature number. So that's it for the ESP8266 side. Later I will adapt this into a web server and I can do some wireless temperature humidity monitoring. On the Arduino Uno side, a lot of this is common to the previous temperature graphical display that I'm linking below. Setting up the touch screen as in the other video, some variables to store the temperature and humidity, some variables added for the humidity gauge, and that all comes from the Bodmer analog meter sketch. Now since I'm drawing the analog meter at the top of the screen, my original thermometer sketch used to have its graphics at the top of the screen, but since I can also resize the analog meter with this scaling factor, which comes from this project, if I resize this, I don't want to have to go in and figure out the coordinates of everything else to make it all fit in line. So where I start drawing my thermometer or any other text boxes, it's not perfect the way I implemented it, but I'm trying to reference my other graphics based on how much I've scaled my relative humidity meter at the very top of the screen. So in the setup I initialize the screen, draw some boxes, draw the background thermometer graphic, draw the touchscreen buttons, and then draw the relative humidity meter background. All that's going to change after the thermometer is drawn and after the meter is drawn. We'll just change the red line on the thermometer or we'll change where the needle is pointing. In the main loop, if there's anything in the serial port incoming buffer, go in and get it and see if it happens to be temperature or humidity data, and if so, store it in the correct variables. So this is where we parse out what we sent from the ESP8266. So now we have the string that was sitting in the serial port. If the word humidity exists at all, go in and take that number out of that string, convert it to a float, and store it as humidity. So this is why I sent it out as the number first, followed by the word humidity or temperature, because this in string dot to float is going to start at the beginning of my string, and if it sees a number right away, it's going to parse it out until it stops detecting that it's a number, until it gets to the word humidity. Similarly, if the word temperature exists, go and parse out a floating number for the temperature data into the temperature degrees Celsius because that's how it's being reported. These are the same routines as before for the touchscreen button press, drawing the thermometer graphic, and those routines I now added in to draw the analog humidity meter. So based on how much I'm scaling the meter, I adjust 
how I'm drawing it. I don't really understand all of this. I didn't study this. I just copied it in as is from the other sketch, but it draws the meter. And I made a note here. All of these numbers on the meter are set up to be specifically located in a fixed spot based on the meter scaling being 1.3333 times. And that's what I'm using in my sketch right now. If I'm actually going to want to scale this meter bigger or smaller than this, I'm going to have to go and figure out if I can auto-locate where these number markings are supposed to be. But for now, it works. And here's the routine to go and update where the needle on the relative humidity meter should be. Again, I didn't study this, so I'm using it as is. It works. And that's it. So now I know a little bit more about drawing graphics as well as using this new temperature humidity sensor I got and how to read in data from the serial port and parse it in different ways to extract useful information. Future project goals to turn this into a Node MCU wireless web server where I can locate the sensor somewhere remote where I want to monitor the conditions and then access it from afar. A relatively simple project with a lot of potential.